Over the last few months, Google reps have gotten increasingly pushy to get us to include values associated with each of the different conversion actions in our accounts. Now for e-commerce, that's a no brainer. You want to make sure that you're tracking revenue so you can see your return on ad spend. It's pretty clear cut. But for lead generation campaigns, the value is not associated with the lead or what is usually the in campaign conversion that we would track in the platform. So it gets a little more murky. Now I have my own theories as to why Google reps are pushing this values and conversions topic. And I'll probably share that theory with you over the course of the video. But for now, what I want to talk about is how you can assign different values to your conversion actions in Google ads, talk about some strategies for determining what those values should be if you're a lead generation company, and then talk about how those values will impact your campaigns. We're going to start in the conversions manager in our paid media pros placeholder account. We don't use this account for much, so don't be surprised if there's basically no data in here and a few warnings throughout. When you're assigning values to your conversion actions, you're given the same three options, whether the conversion action is already set up, like some of them that you can see here, or if you're creating a brand new one. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to go through a new conversion action setup so we can see what the process looks like. So I'm going to come over here and click plus new conversion action. I'm just going to choose website, add in our website real quick. It didn't find any suggested conversion actions, so we need to create one manually. So I'm just going to click plus a new conversion action manually. Now we get all the controls that we would need here. The first thing you need to do is select a goal and an optimization action. And I'm not going to get too much into that because we've already put together a video that outlines what those are. You can check that out at the top of the screen right now. But knowing where I'm going to go with this, I'm just going to go ahead and select the category of purchase. I'm also going to give it a conversion name, and that also is going to be purchase. Now the last piece that I'm going to talk about in this setup is going to be this value section. This is why we're here for this video in the first place. These are the three options that you're given for assigning a value to a conversion action. The first is going to be to use the same value for each conversion. So if I choose this one, you're able to add in the value that you want to assign for each conversion action. For this one, that means that every time somebody makes this purchase action in this case, or whatever you end up naming your conversion, it will always have the same conversion value associated with it. The default number that they put in here is going to be a dollar, but you're able to change the currency to whatever you would like it to be. And then you can add in whatever value you want it to be. So just for the sake of this example, let's say I wanted it to be 50. I could then choose whatever value I want this to be. And every time somebody converts on this purchase conversion action, it will then assign $50 in value to that conversion to my account. Pretty simple setup. The more complex version of this is going to be to use different values for each conversion. So let's choose this one. This is going to feel a lot more like an e-commerce setup you'll still see that there's a default value that has the exact same controls as the same value setting. You choose your currency and then you choose a default value, which basically means that if Google cannot find a value associated with a conversion, it will apply the $50 value to that action. Now, when I say find it, you'll also notice here in this little tiny text, you'll be provided information on how to set up dynamic values in your tracking code as you proceed through this conversion setup process. Now I've set these up before and I feel like it doesn't do a great job of calling out how to set that up. So what's actually easier is if you just click this learn more button and it takes you to this track transaction specific conversion values page. Now I am not prepared to get into all of this tracking setup that you need to do here. All I want to talk about is this process down here in step two, because I just want to highlight for you that to use dynamic conversion values, you will have to make adjustments in your website code to include value and currency every time somebody converts. This should be pretty easy for all encompassing website builders like Shopify or WooCommerce because they likely already have this built in and it's already set up with a natural integration. But if your website is not through those platforms or something similar, you're probably going to have to talk to your web developer and make sure you choose either a page load or click conversion action that can then dynamically pull in these values to Google ads. But again, if for some reason that dynamic value is missing, you do have the option to set a default value so that if it can't find that $123 in the example article, it'll populate it with 50 so that even though it's not perfect, you're still seeing some value tracked in the conversion column. 
Now the last option in this section is probably what most people have been using for lead generation campaigns, and that's to not include a conversion value for this action. More often than not, most of my lead generation accounts don't know what the value associated with each of their conversion actions are, so they usually just set this up as zero. This just means every time somebody converts, conversion value is always zero. Now I'm sure you can figure out that if you're trying to optimize for e-commerce, this different values for each conversion is probably gonna be the best option for you. But for lead generation, Google's been pushing to use more conversion values in your conversion actions. So how would you set those up? More often than not, you probably don't have values associated in your code. So what you're gonna to need to use is the first option here, where each conversion is the same value. So that begs the question, what value do I associate with my conversion actions? Luckily, Google's bailed me out a little bit because not long before I started recording this video, they put together a conversion calculator to help you figure out the values so that I didn't have to build something myself. How convenient. We've added the link to this conversion value calculator in the description below, so you can check it out for yourself. And there are a handful of resources that are also on this page, but what I really wanna show you is just the calculator itself. And that's gonna be down here in step two. And this is a very interactive calculator to figure out what your values for each conversion should be. So let me show you how this works for a hypothetical example. One option that we have all the time is that our clients will advertise a white paper download, but then they don't know how that translates into customers. So we have to kind of guess. So we start by entering the conversion action that we're tracking in Google ads that creates a lead. So an example scenario we run into a lot with our clients is they might be offering a white paper download as the conversion action, but they're not sure what the value should be associated with that because they don't know how that translates into customers. So we usually tell them, we just need to make the best approximation of what that needs to be. So we usually get data from their CRM platform that tries to look at the number of people who downloaded white papers and then look at how they progress through each of the stages to become a customer. The nice part is this calculator lets you do that interactively on the Google platform to get the data that you need. So let me show you really quick how this would work. So we start off by entering the conversion action that we would use in Google Ads because that's what we're trying to find a value for. So that's gonna be a white paper download. Click continue. And then what happens next? Let's just assume that that person becomes an MQL. Click continue. And now what percentage of people make it from white paper download to MQL? This is where your CRM data comes in very handy. You can usually analyze the number of white paper downloads, the number of people who are MQLs, and that will give you a conversion rate by dividing the MQL number by the white paper download. Let's say in theory, 10% of people become MQLs. Probably not a very high percent because a white paper download isn't necessarily a high value action. And then we'll click continue. And then just to cut this video a little bit shorter, let's say that the next process is that somebody becomes a customer. We're then gonna click continue. What percentage of people make it from MQL to customer? Again, let's say about 10% and then click continue. And here's where I purposely decided to make this video shorter. You can always add in additional stages in the customer buyer journey. All you have to do is click yes, add another, and you'll be prompted with the same types of questions where they'll be asking you what the stage is after customer, or in this example, after whatever I would have put in here instead, and then how many people make it from that first stage to the second stage to get your conversion rate. But for now, I'm trying to keep this shorter, so I'm just gonna say no, that's it. And then the last question you'll be asked once you fill in all of your customer stages is what is the average dollar value of a customer. So here for a lead gen account, you would think what is the average lifetime value for your clients or your customers based on either project size, how often they come back, whatever your churn rates are, if you're a software company, whatever that number is, think of the average lifetime value for your customer. In this example, let's just say that we have a piece of software and average value is about $10,000. Now we just need to click continue and calculate. So based on this calculator, the average value of a white paper download is about $100 because 10% of those people make it to MQL, which it then shows you the average conversion value of your MQL is $1,000 because the customer itself is worth $10,000. Now, you can use this to try and engineer your CPA targets likely below 
$100, but now you know that the value associated with it should be $100. Now, one more cool little feature that Google's put together is once you create this flow, if you scroll down a little bit, you can click download PDF and Google will provide you with a one sheeter that looks like this. It might seem really simple, but you have no idea how valuable something like this can be when you are trying to convince your boss or your clients as to what the conversion values should be and what your CPA targets reasonably should be in an account. If you've ever tried to have the discussion about why you should increase or decrease your cost per lead or conversion value targets, you'll likely know how valuable this would be, especially since it comes from Google and it carries a little bit more weight. This calculator is super helpful and it really makes it easy to calculate values. If you don't know specific steps in your conversion process, I certainly would suggest that you go check it out. But also, if you're trying to get some ideas, there are some preset options up here in step one. It starts off showing you this general info, but if you click the down arrow here, you can find out what it usually looks like for healthcare, where somebody signs up, request a consult, sales qualified lead, they schedule an appointment, and then they have an initial consultation. There are tons of these suggested customer journeys based on industry. So if you're a little bit stuck, you can check one of these out and get an idea of how they work. And the last thing I'll say here is that although we used the calculator to find the value for the highest up action, this white paper download, don't discount the ability to track each of these different conversion actions and their subsequent value. If you're able to track an MQL in Google Ads, I absolutely encourage you to do it and assign the average conversion value at $1,000 per this example and any other stages that you can throughout the funnel. If we hop back into our conversion setup process, you would then create additional conversion actions for each of these different stages and each conversion would have its own same value and you would then associate that with the value that you got out of the calculator. So each time you tracked a white paper download, that would be worth $100. Each time you tracked an MQL, that would be worth $1,000. And each time you tracked a customer, that would be worth $10,000. Now the last thing you need to know is how these conversion values will impact your campaigns. And the first thing to know is why I left us on this screen is because up in this conversion action optimization section, the conversion value will only impact your campaigns if you're using it as a primary action used for bidding optimization. If you set this as a secondary action, it will only be counted in the all conversions column and the values associated with it will not be used for bidding. But if you have it as a primary action and this conversion action is in a goal category that is optimized for at the campaign level, these values will be taken into account when trying to optimize for conversion value. So let me show you what it looks like to opt into a bidding strategy that will utilize this type of information. I created a very basic search campaign outline and now I'm on the bidding page. To utilize the conversion values, you need to change the first objective of what you wanna focus on. It defaults to conversions, but what we need to choose is conversion value. You would then set a target return on ad spend, which is optional, and you then add in the return on ad spend that you want for your campaigns. This return on ad spend will be optimized for based on the values that you associate with each conversion action. So if you set a target return on ad spend of 200%, let's say, that would mean that for that white paper download example that we just gave, where the value is $100, the bidding algorithm is going to try and get those white paper download conversions at $50 per download, because that would give you a 200% return on that conversion action. If you're optimizing for MQL in the same campaign, which I'm not here to discuss the merits of that in this video, but you would then be trying to get a $1,000 conversion for $500. It's going to optimize toward those actions for you in that manner. Now you can see that there is a warning down here that says before setting a target return on ad spend, wait until the account that has this conversion tracking set up has at least 15 conversions in the last 30 days. This is a different message than most of the things Google has been saying recently, where it talks about not needing conversions to optimize. So definitely pay attention to this because they're deviating from that message a bit. If you do not have 15 conversions on the conversion action that you're trying to optimize for in this campaign in the last 30 days, use a different conversion action or you should group conversion actions together or you should wait until you have 15 conversions on that event in the last 30 days. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about real quick 
is trying to give you some ideas of how to set up your target return on ad spend for your campaigns. We're gonna make this real simple by looking at some slides. The volume that you're able to generate through your target return on ad spend campaigns is going to be an inverse of what your target return on ad spend target is. So in very simple terms, when your target return on ad spend goes up, meaning when you increase the target that you have, the volume is likely to go down. Google is trying to be more specific if you have a 400% ROAS target as compared to a 300%, those users are more difficult to find and it has to be more selective. So your volume is likely to go down as it gets more selective. Now, on the other hand, when your target return on ad spend goes down, you get less restrictive, your volume can go up. It's not a guarantee, but you're giving Google more room to test and iterate and find new users who could convert at a lower return on ad spend target and you have a better chance of getting more volume if that ROAS target is lower. Now that doesn't mean that you should set it low just to get lots of volume. You still need to be profitable, but you do need to know that changing your return on ad spend target will impact the volume that you get from your campaigns. Now I know I teased in the intro that I have a theory about why Google reps are getting more aggressive about pushing this and why they've generated the conversion values calculator for you. And I think it comes from a place of trying to help and make things easier. But in a lot of ways, I also feel like it's going to be something that ends up taking some control away from advertisers down the line. We still have the ability to set our own conversion values. We still have the ability to set our own return on ad spend targets. But just like the way of some of the old attribution models, seems like Google is trying to force us into a few different areas so that they can eventually take away some controls. So I might sound like a crazy lady who's just spitting out conspiracy theories, but I wouldn't be surprised if down the line, we start seeing that we need to set different conversion values for our conversion actions, just so our campaigns can run, and then that Google will likely start to take those and suggest those to other people based on the information from our business. Regardless of whatever path Google is on, I still think that this is a good strategy to employ and can really help you see better returns on your conversions if you get all of the calculator work and conversion values set up properly. So hopefully this overview has given you a good idea of how you can assign values, how you can figure out what they should be, and an understanding of how those values will impact your campaign performance in Google Ads. If you have any additional questions about any of this setup or any of my crazy theories, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.